Next up, we're gonna be going over how to work with images in Swift UI. So we're gonna go over how to add them to our application interface and how to modify them as well. So let's go ahead and get started by going to our project navigator and creating a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view and we're gonna do this for every chapter guys. Uh, and I'm just gonna call this icons tutorial. And I'll go over why we're calling this icons in just a second. Really quickly, let's just connect our preview by hitting that resume button and we see hello world showing up. So uh, you guys will notice that very similar to how we have this text view component that we are given to or that we're given by Swift UI, we also have an image component. So when I open up my parentheses, I have a couple different options for how to create an image or add an image to my app. We're gonna select this system name image guy. Um, so we're gonna just pass in a string. You'll notice that it's asking us for a string. And let's just go ahead and type out like paper plane. So you guys notice that now I get this like really cool looking paper plane image. Uh, another one I could type in is like person, right? And it gives me this person image. So you guys are probably asking where the heck are these images coming from? So Xcode actually gives us these images for free. We get access to over 3000 icon images uh, from Xcode, which is absolutely amazing. This feature recently came out. Before that, if you guys wanted icons in your app, you would have to go find them on the internet and import them into your project. It was a huge hassle. So this is a huge lifesaver that Xcode gives us. So where do we get these images? Well, it's from an app called SF Symbols. So guys, go to uh, Safari or Google Chrome and you're just gonna Google SF Symbols. So I'll just do that with you guys right now. So I'll go to Google, I'll type in SF Symbols and click on the first thing that comes up on Apple's developer website, developer.apple.com. And you guys are gonna get this uh, SF Symbols 3 application. And this is just an app that gives us a list of all the available icons that we have uh, uh, available to us. So down at the bottom, you're gonna see an option to download SF Symbols. Just click download there. It's a really small application. It's only 210 megabytes. And once you guys get that downloaded, uh, we can open it up. I'll just hit command space and then type out SF symbols and you guys should notice it coming up. So this is the application and they have a bunch of the images categorized like we can go to transportation and it gives us all these transportation icons, gaming, objects and tools, all. They have this really cool multicolor section um, where, you know, uh, let's see. Well, that should be multicolor, but it's all good. Um, anyway, weather icons. So we just have access to all this really cool stuff. So the string that I added into the system name image is actually gonna represent a file or icon that exists in SF symbols. So for example, if I go search for person, you guys notice that I have person right here. I could also say person dot circle. So let me just add dot circle here and it gives me a circular person image. You guys can see that right there. So just to make this a little bit bigger, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and add a dot font modifier and give it a large title font. And you guys are gonna notice that makes my image a little bit bigger. And uh, to make it even bigger, you could say dot image scale and then say dot large, and it'll actually enhance the size of that image even a little bit more. Um, I could also add like dot fill here and it fills in the image for me. So this is really, really cool functionality. You guys can look through this list of images and grab whatever you want and place it in the app here. Just make sure that with your image constructor or when you're creating the image, you have this system name property. If you don't have system name there, it's not going to work. Okay, it's gonna just be blank. Um, we're go we'll go over how to access our own custom images in just a little bit, possibly the next video. For now, I want us to go over how we can further modify or customize these icon images that we get from Xcode. So next up, we can change the color of this image to be literally whatever we want. So I could go here and say dot foreground color, and I could say like dot blue. And you guys will notice that it changes the color of the image for me, which is absolutely incredible, right? You got, if before this feature came out, if you wanted to do something like this, you would have to either find the image online yourself or make it yourself. So these images are highly customizable that we get straight from Xcode, which is absolutely awesome. 
Um, something else that's cool, guys, is I could apply my custom color scheme to this image. And we'll notice that it stays that blue color, but if I change the app to dark mode, once again, by clicking that icon right there and going here and selecting dark, it will change the color of my image to pink. That is absolutely amazing and it's so easy to do, right? So <clears throat> um, now that we've seen that we can customize the color of our images, let's go over how we can further customize the size or the frame of our images or icons in this case. So. I am going to uh, delete these modify or comment out these modifiers here. And you notice that it gets really small again. I could then go and apply, apply a frame to my image of say like 200 by 200 and delete the alignment property. And you guys will notice that <clears throat> this is the actual frame of the image, but the image isn't filling out that frame. So that's because this is like a stock image from Xcode and we need to tell Xcode that we want to be able to resize this image when it has a custom frame. <coughs> Excuse me. So you guys can just go up to the top of our list of modifiers and you can say dot resizable. And you guys will notice then that it fills out the entire frame of that sort of bounding box there. Um, as we saw before, we could also say like dot font dot system size 200 and we could comment that out and that obviously and uh, go ahead and comment out resizable as well. And it does it has pretty much the same effect, but sometimes there's going to be a time where you want to physically define a frame for your image and you don't just always want to use this font property, but we have the option to do both. So if I am uh, giving it a custom frame, you need to add this resizable modifier. And this is gonna be a lot more common than just applying a font size, um, as we'll see later on in the course. So there's also a couple different like content modes we could add. We could say dot scaled to fill. Um, and for example, guys, if I change the height to like 100, you guys will notice that it fills out that frame, right? So let me uh, copy that actually or cut it and put it before. <clears throat> so we're telling it that we want it to fill this frame um, of 200 by 100. And you guys notice that the frame is this little bounding box right here, but it goes outside of that frame. Um, and that changes when we add this modifier before we set the frame. If I want it to stay within that frame, like sort of sandwich it and force it to fit within that frame, one, you could say dot scale to fit, and it will shrink down and fit that frame, or I could keep it at scale to fill, and I could apply this modifier that says dot clipped, and it will literally sandwich my image down into that frame. So there might be situations where you want to do that, um, for whatever the purposes of your app may be. But typically what you're gonna see is just dot scaled to fit. And it'll fit that frame for us and sort of keep the original size of the image. So the last thing I wanna talk about before we move on to how to add our own images to our application is why exactly placing this scale to fit modifier before the frame affects how the image gets rendered. So let's go over what I mean by that, right? If I go ahead and cut this scale to fit guy out and I were to put it after the frame, you notice that the image gets rendered differently, right? It's stretching itself to fill that frame. So the reason that happens is the order in which we apply modifiers to a view component in SwiftUI matters in certain situations. So for example, I'll read out in plain English what exactly we're doing here. So we're creating a frame uh, as of line 18, that's uh, 200 by 100 pixels. And then we're saying that we want the image to scale to fit the frame that we have created, right? But if we were to place this guy before the frame, right now it's saying, hey, I want you to scale this image to fit the whatever the regular image size is. And this scale to fit doesn't know anything about the frame because the frame gets defined after we apply our scale to fit modifier. So the frame of the image, as you can see from the box, is still 200 by 100, but the image looks normal, okay? And 
that's just uh, sort of an important thing to note when you're working with images and overall working with modifiers in SwiftUI. Sometimes the order matters and you guys don't really have to worry about that too much right now. We're gonna get more into detail with that as the bootcamp goes on. So I just wanted to introduce you guys to that concept, but for now, we're gonna move on to how to add our own custom images to our Xcode project and display them in our app. So get excited for that, guys. We'll see you there.